Welcome to the Dallas Elder Care Channel, brought to you by John Vermillion and the Vermillion Law Firm. Today's guest is Jerry Reiser, geriatric care manager and founder of Caregiver Support Systems. Uh, hi, this is John Vermillion. I'm a, an estate planning attorney here in Dallas, Texas, and I'm one of the sponsors of the Elder Care Channel. And today we are meeting with Jerry Reiser. Jerry, uh, what is the name of your organization? Caregiver Support Systems. Okay. And Jerry, you were telling me some very interesting things about the history of uh, banks and how uh, very often they either work with trustees or uh, sometimes are responsible themselves as trustees when it comes to the care of senior citizens. At one time, they were the responsible party. And is it correct, I think you told me this before, that at one time banks actually had, had social workers on staff. But but then that changed. When did that change? And they also and they also hired the caregivers and paid them wow. out of the client's trust. Okay. Uh, it began to change in the early '90s, uh, just as I uh, had joined the National Association of Professional Geriatric Care Managers. Okay. And so it was a nice confluence because I called the bank and say, I, I'm geriatric care manager and. Uh, we do this and this and this. Okay. And, uh, first of all, they'd never heard of it. Okay. In Texas, and secondly, it sounded like something that maybe they could use. So it was an educational sale. Correct. It wasn't Correct. hard to get an appointment. Wasn't hard to get to see the trust officer. And uh, pretty soon, uh, we started to get cases. Okay. And the first three or four were actually cases uh, where the, their trustee was being financially abused by a uh, health care company. I see. That was, for instance, charging them for round-the-clock care. But not necessarily providing the round-the-clock care or something. Yeah, so. uh, not necessarily. Well, providing it wasn't necessary. I see. I see. So, you know. Uh, that you're making a profit on somebody who didn't need that. Well, I think that this is a, a very interesting development. So this, uh, uh, so often, it just whether we have corporate trustees or, or, or individuals who are serving as trustees, they may be responsible not only for the financial decisions of the, yes. their ward, but hey, the medical decisions. Right. And what they need to do is they need to call an organization like yours and yeah. have not only an assessment done, but then have the, the care go from that point forward. It can work both ways, yes. Yeah. We can either go out and put together an assessment of uh, you know, person, medical needs, their personal needs, their structures, you know, their driving, yeah. uh, yes, all those is. sort yeah. of things, uh, and then make recommendations. Okay. And the person could, cho could choose to carry those out themselves. I see. Often they live somewhere else or they're professionals like yourselves. They already have something to do. So they'll hire us to do it. Correct. Because they may have the power of attorney for health care had just come in at that time. But if the let me get this straight, if the bank or corporate trustee secures your services, they have of course a duty to make sure that you are the type of organization that can provide prudent and proper care. Oh, so there's oversight. Uh, absolutely. Believe, so. Absolutely. But I mean that, that I think that's a, a tremendous commendation for your group if you are working for these types of, of trustees. So yeah, it, we it is. We're very honored to to be able to work uh, commercially at the level that we work mm -hmm. in, in the community. Obviously clients that are going to be able to provide care at home. 24 hours a day. Well, there you go. And I'm going to take it from the standpoint that I deal with a lot of estate planning clients who uh, have, have uh, individuals or trustees for, for very often for a senior citizen. And uh, they're often scrambling around, working themselves to death, yeah. trying to oh. do things. And, and, yeah. and it makes more sense to what we don't call, call the caregiver support systems and, and, yeah. and, and, be the oversight of them, but let them do the professional uh, uh, assessments that are needed and then the care. Now, you are, are a full range uh, organization. You provide uh, not only assistance with activities of daily living, but also uh, medical supervision for medic 
medicines and that sort of thing. Yes, and we provide uh, uh, caregivers in the home mm -hmm. working, mm -hmm. working under uh, Texas state license, uh, health care license. I see. There's, there's personal assistance license where you just send people in, mm -hmm. and there's health care license, which we have, uh, which is very helpful because then you can take care of the complex things, especially as the clients age in place. I see. I you see. You can grow with them. And so that's how we ended up there. We initially started out just uh, making recommendations and then kind of overseeing the client reporting back I to see. the bank. I see. And so when they had to make a decision, they could make an informed decision. Okay. And I didn't, I didn't, I would have to use another healthcare company to provide the services. And now you and provide the services now, them. right? Yes. So because I found that you know people don't pay attention to you unless you're signing. The there check. you go. There you go. I mean, it was a big no-no in the industry to do that because it was felt by a lot of the social work groups in the industry that you would take advantage of the client. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. If you're working under, under a trust officer, and, and, and you know anything about like you do about probate, certainly, and you've been through a, a, a trial guardianship trials, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know that there's already eyes in place. You're not going to fool around. No, no, you really clients. There is accountability uh, every step of the way. Yeah. And if you did, if you weren't performing uh, to the satisfaction of those people overseeing you, you wouldn't be in business very long. So, that's right. That's so uh, now, uh, are you running into a lot of uh, clients that have uh, dementia and Alzheimer's? Is that something yeah, that you're running into a lot? I would say that it, it, uh, there's kind of a base uh, of Alzheimer's at some level in at least 60% of our clients. Okay. Or, uh, let me. I'd rather. I prefer to say some sort of cognitive impairment. Cognitive impairment, or, okay, very or, good. Or damage to the brain. I see. Because uh, there are so many different things that can cause it now that uh, uh, they discovered about 10 years ago, uh, Lewy body syndrome, which is mm. a combination of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Oh, and it's- uh, Well, I hadn't thought about that. I mean, yeah. there could be uh, that, that combination. Ooh, that could be, that could be, it's difficult. It, yeah. It's confusing uh, because you have, you have to handle the person differently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People with Parkinson's who go to go to get up may try to overdo what they do. If, but people with Lewy body syndrome don't even know they have Parkinson's. Well, that's, that's what you're saying. Is, uh, and, and would we say Parkinson's is primarily a physical problem, or is uh, the Alzheimer's is more mental, or am I misstating that? No, you're not misstating it. Uh, uh, Parkinson's generally ends up with uh, some sort of uh, insult to the brain mm -hmm. later on. I see. But Alzheimer's is Alzheimer's. Yeah. And so, so yeah. you've got it in the early stage of Parkinson's, it's the Alzheimer's that's causing the judgment problems. Okay about what you can do and what you can't do. How how late in the development of an Alzheimer's condition, I don't know what the terminology is, can someone be left at home? I mean, uh, I guess it depends on how many hours of care they have a day or something, doesn't it? The person can stay at their home. But our goal is to keep people in their home until okay. they, until they right. pass away. So it's just a matter of how many uh, hours do they need physical uh, uh, care. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I had a client that used to have uh, breaks with reality, and I'd go over to her house, get under the bed with her so that the people couldn't hear us talking, and uh, have a discussion about, you know, what the problem was and why she had, was going to lock the caregiver in the closet. Oh, my goodness. And we got to talk a little bit about that. And I may rub her hand. Uh, uh, I have a glove on, and I may have some sort of antipsychotic medication. I see. Small dose, and the next thing you know, they're kind of calmed down. You can get out from under the bed. On my desk, I have a sandwich 
mm. that I had to take away from a client. Wow, wow. <laughs> she was threatening to kill you. Well, uh, but you are, uh, uh, it sounds like you need to be brave, but at the same time, if you understand the condition, you know how to address it. You can. And yeah. I think that this is a very important aspect of home health care now is to, to know how to handle uh, those types of mental conditions. You yeah. Know. The, the, the big thing finally became uh, in anybody who's got any kind of uh, uh, organic brain syndrome mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. be where they are. They may be in 1945. Wow. Wow. In their brain, you know, having a conversation or in their how they're sensing correct. things and interpreting. And so you just go there with them. And, you know, you don't have to have uh, complete knowledge, but you can have a uh, uh, you know, responsive discussion. Oh, yes, you know. Okay. Well, you know, okay. Oh, God, that was terrible that that happened. Yeah, that, that might have happened to me. Well, it sounds like the first thing you must have is empathy for these people. So. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so often, I think maybe family members are prone to just like we are in all of our family relationships, become impatient. Of course, I mean so, I, these you know, kids are looking at the most powerful person in their lives. Sure. Deteriorating, and I don't care how old you are, it scares you. It scares you from two aspects: one, wow. you don't want to lose them, and two, you know that you might become. Them. And so it, it, it really uh, emotionally for the, uh, the adult child mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, has uh, some real problems. So yeah, it's hard to deal with them. And the already developed mechanisms of talking don't work anymore. So we have to tell the kids, you know, this isn't something that dad's doing to you because they change the way they're treated. Right, you. right. This is something that's happening to Dad. He's not doing it to you, it's happening to him. There you go. Right. So you have to... That, it, exactly, you've got to get the frame get of the reference stage. down. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, exactly. Now you've given me some examples, some stories of, of things you've handled with individual clients. Can you give us an example of a, a client where you went, you or your group went above and beyond the call of duty to do something really unusual. <laughs> well, I guess all the cases uh, are, are that way, right? No, <laughs> I, I, you know, that, that was the first thing I thought of, but then really, I mean, it's, it's just a day in the life. And, there you go. And, and I don't mean to typify any situation because they're all different. And we never make the mistake of saying, this is like that. Ah, it, it, everybody Every, and their family are what they are. Are unique. All different. All unique. Yes. Oh God, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Is there ways. anything you would like to say to the viewers of the Elder Care Channel, uh, just in general or, or specifically about your group that would uh, be helpful? Call us. Okay. You know, because that's what we like to hear. Uh, we'll come see you for free. Well, the uh, first time. That you know. Uh, Absolutely, that should go a long way, you know, too. You don't know how you can help them until you get there to see them, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, Jerry, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, Jerry Reiser of the Caregiver Support Systems Group. And uh, thank, you, thank you for spending time with the Elder Care Channel. Well, it's a real pleasure. Okay. Honor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.